My name is Jeff Ellison, and my client is Andrew Walker. And Andrew and I decided that I would study the relationship between gun control and crime rates. The purpose of the project is to determine whether gun control measures effectively reduce crime rates or crime rates adversely affected by gun control measures that have been taken in the United States and in other nations. From the data gathered from this project, perhaps effective measures can be found to reduce gun-related crime. Crime is used as a reason for gun control. Gun control advocates claim that restrictions on gun ownership will reduce gun ownership. And since a majority of homicides are committed by assailants armed with guns, restrictions on gun ownership will reduce homicides. But not all homicides are crimes. Shooting someone in self-defense may be a homicide, but it's not a crime. Guns are used 2.5 million times a year in America for self-defense. This equates to guns being used 80 times more to protect life than to take life. Also, suicide is included among homicides in gun-related death studies. This artificially inflates the number of gun deaths. Suicide accounts for two-thirds of all firearm deaths in the United States each year. Firearms are used in almost half of all suicides. According to the Harvard Journal of Law and Public Policy, those who would commit suicide are not going to be deterred by the absence of firearms. And here, you can see the dotted line here. This is the homicide rate from 1970 to 2009. This is the suicide rate. You see how the suicide rate pretty much stays about the same while our homicide rate has been plummeting. And of course, this is the number of handguns owned in America, which seems to have, have nothing to do. Do gun bans reduce crime? Handgun bans have been used in cities in the U.S. and countries around the world and have not been effective in reducing crime. Violent crime, including gun crime, has actually increased in most of these cities and countries. Criminological studies show that 54 to 80 percent of homicides occur in circumstances that would easily permit the use of the long gun. Rifles are 10 times more deadly than handguns, and shotguns are so much more deadly that for medical purposes, shotgun wounds cannot be compared to bullet wounds. Assault weapon bans. An assault rifle is properly defined as a select fire military rifle. This means that it can shoot in both full automatic mode and semi-automatic mode. In the 1980s, media began to use the term assault rifle to re refer to rifles based solely on the fact that they're semi-automatic and military in appearance. What the media calls assault rifles are, also, are used so seldom in the commission of a crime, the FBI doesn't even keep statistics on the subject. Have gun restrictions ever reduced crime? Here over the last 30 years, you see the, oh, not bad. You see the homicide rate in America. This is the supposed Wild West when homicide was very low. And then here at the time of the labor riots and the Sullivan Act, the first gun control, homicide soared. It soared on up to Prohibition, where it soared even more. It wasn't until Prohibition end that homicides started dropping in the United States. And it stayed rather steady, and then all of a sudden, after the assassinations of the 60s and the civil unrest, and the 1968 Gun Control Act, it started to soar again. And then the war of drugs, it soared a bit, and then it leveled out. And then in the late 80s, states started 
issuing concealed carry permits and homicides has dropped. Do more guns equal less crime? Empirical studies of gun availability and crime rates show that an increase in guns owned for self-protection were associated with lower violent crime rates. When a robbery victim resists with a gun, the robbery success rate drops from 80% to 30%, and the victim injury rate falls from 25% to 17%. Studies suggest that efforts should be made to reduce rather than increase restrictions on gun ownership for the law-abiding public. Dropping crime rates more than compensates for the non-criminal and accidental deaths caused by the guns. And here, you see, this is the violent crime and murder rate, how they've gone down from 1992 to 2011. This is the guns owned in the United States in that time, and it's soared. Police and armed citizens, how do they feel about it? A 2005 survey of the National Association of Chiefs of Police found that 90% of chiefs of police and sheriffs support civilian gun ownership. 63% claim that concealed weapons permit reduce crime. And 93% also say that the news media is not fair and balanced on the issue of gun control. As for safety issues concerning the civilian self-defense, police have an error rate of 11% when it comes to the accidental shooting of innocent civilians. The error rate for armed citizens is 2%. This makes armed citizens five times safer than police. The gun control advocates say people legally carrying guns will lead to a wild west mentality among the population. This argument is not supported by statistical or scientific evidence. States that allow the right to carry have lower crime rates than those that do not. According to a 2006 FBI study, in right to carry states, rates were lower in violent crime by 26%, murder by 31%, robbery by 51%, and aggravated assault by 15%. Concealed carry laws have not been proven to increase crime. Only the reduction of crime has been seen, as criminals don't know which citizens are actually armed. And here you can see in the Western Hemisphere, we've got the world average homicide rate. This is from the UN. Down here is the United States. These are all the gun restricting countries. You can see they have much higher homicide rates. And since Canada's implementation of strict gun laws in 1995, the murder rate in the US has dropped 33%, while Canada's has increased by 3%. During the same time period, Violent crime rate has dropped markedly in the U.S. while it has remained about the same in Canada. Confiscating and prohibiting registering guns are expensive failures. The only beneficiaries of this perverse policy are the criminals who prey on unarmed citizens. In the late 90s, Britain moved from stringent gun controls to a complete ban on all handguns and many long guns. Hundreds of thousands of guns were confiscated from those law owners law-abiding enough to turn them into authorities. Without suggesting this caused violence, the ban's ineffectiveness was such that by the year 2000, violent crime had so increased that Britain had Europe's highest violent crime rate, surpassing even the United States. And here, from the British Home Office, you can see after the all-out ban a year later, violent crime soared. 
Does gun control work? Gun control has proven over time not to be a deterrent to crime. Crime through gun control does not work in the interest of the law-abiding public. Gun restrictions on the law-abiding citizens only leave them more vulnerable to criminals. There's a definite correlation between strict gun restrictions and rising crime rates. As well, there's a correlation between fewer gun restrictions and decreasing crime rates. Gun control is more a product of culture conflict than a response to crime. So what can we do to deter, deter crime in regards to guns? There are already laws out we have in this country that keep, the, keep guns out of the hands of criminals. We need to see that they are enforced. Having an armed public has already been proven to be a deterrent to crime. Right to carry laws have proven to reduce crime and protect would-be victims. We need to impose stiffer penalties on those who use guns in the commission of their crimes. Harsh punishment for gun crimes keeps criminals from using guns, but pervert, preserves the threat of an armed response by victims. Gun crime penalties are focused on the real problem, not guns, but using of a gun in the commission of a crime. Florida has the right idea when it comes to their 1020 life law. If a person uses a gun in the commission of a crime, 10 years is added to the sentence. <coughs> if a person shoots a gun in the commission of a crime, 20 years is added to the sentence. And if someone shoots someone in the commission of a crime, it's a mandatory life sentence. Measures such as this will truly impact crime rates in a positive way. So the solution, criminal control, not gun control. And that's it.